Despicable Me is a franchise I continue to be very mixed on. We all know this by now. It's basically Illumination's magnum opus of a franchise. Every studio has one at some point. You know, Toy Story, Shrek, Ice Age, don't even get me started on Ice Age. The Lego movies, oh fuck no way. Despicable Me was a cute film. Just a simple movie about a villain who wants to steal the moon, while at the same time trying to adopt three girls. It was just really wholesome to see Gru's relationship in the girls, and you didn't get a heart attack every time you saw the minions on screen. A handful of their scenes didn't make me want to kill them, but uh, we'll get to that later. Then we got Despicable Me 2, and it's actually the best one in the entire series dare I say, better than most of Illumination's catalog. It still remains the charm of the original, has a banger soundtrack, it's a lot funnier, the girls are actually useful, I love Lucy as a character, and of course, it has El Mario. This is easily where the franchise peaked. Skip over to the Minions movie and basically everything went downhill from there. Like, you blink and then there's suddenly some fat guys slapping each other's asses. What? But the less we talk about that shit, the better. Despicable Me 3 is another movie that exists for some reason. Just the textbook definition of, we only made this because the predecessors made a shitload of money, so fuck it, let's give Gru a brother. The only thing worth talking about it is the soundtrack and Trey Parker. Okay, next. Oh yeah, Minions 2. It was fine. Overhyped as hell, but a masterpiece compared to the first one. It's this part of the video where we finally talk about the long-awaited... No, not long-awaited. No one wanted this. Despicable Me 4. Wasn't particularly impressed by the trailer, but the one thing that caught my eye was that Gru fucked. That was really it. The, the girls looked the same, the villain looked uninteresting, and the minions were also there. I guess there was also this girl wearing pink, but she just reminded me of Jen from Kung Fu Panda 4. It's safe to say I wasn't looking forward to this one, but my curiosity got the best of me. I wanted to see if they could bring back the charm of the original first two. I just did a boom boom. I just did a boom boom. This is of course the part of the video where I tell you they make a shit joke in the first 8 minutes of the movie, so what do you think I thought of it? This movie's boring as hell, bro. The movie is about this villain dude, I, I uh, forgot his name, so I'm just gonna call him the Cockroach. The Cockroach wants revenge on Gru for some reason, so Gru's family has to go into hiding and have completely new identities. That's the movie, we'll take that money, thank you very much. This just uh, felt like another Despicable Me 3, where it's just a collection of things happening. Things happen just to happen. And maybe that was the intent? Like, they wanted to make a slice of life movie, Studio Ghibli type shit, but they certainly didn't do it well. Was that what they were trying to pull with this? It's like near the climax, the movie remembers, oh yeah, we have a plot. We should probably do something with that. Oh yeah, there, there is this other thing. So you know how like almost every Despicable Me movie is about Gru's relationship with someone? The first movie was about Gru and the girls. The second movie was about Gru and Lucy. The third one was about Gru and his stupid ass brother. Even Minions 2 is about Gru's relationship with Wild Knuckles. In this one, it's about Gru and his baby boy, creatively named Junior. This could have created parallels between the first movie and how he raised the three girls, but no, they barely touch on it. It felt largely unimportant to everything else. None of the dialogue was particularly funny, but it is better at visual humor, like most Illumination movies if you think about it. The animation is... I mean, I don't want to call it bad, it clearly isn't. It really gets old to you at a certain point. Part of the reason the Mario movie was so visually pleasing was its variety of colors and its beautiful backgrounds. It was basically just Mario with a higher budget. Migration also looked good because of the character animation and its sense of scale. And I really liked the way they translated the director's 2D art style into CG. You can really tell half the time. This one just looks like an animated movie. That's about all I have to say about the visual side of things. Like, I remember even Minions 2 having fun with its animation, but oh well. Then there's the characters. Um, Gru's basically untouched. The villain is kinda lame. The girls are there. Lucy is there. Her and Gru once again make a cute pairing. A girl in pink is there. The baby is just Jack-Jack, but more generic. Oh yeah, the villain's fiance is there too. Most characters in this movie are just there. Like, they don't 
add anything. The girls are kind of washed in this movie. They no longer serve a purpose. It's like they only show up because the movie needs to show something cute for a few minutes. Like Margot. She has this whole thing where she's all sad that she gets to leave all her friends because of the new place she's going to and is struggling to make new friends at her new, her new school. This is given virtually no attention. Some kid at school pranks her off screen. We never see her struggle with new friends. This is never brought up again. So what was the fucking point? There is a karate scene which this franchise seems to have a lot of. And it's about Agnes not wanting to tell her real name because oh no, that's lying. And then Edith defends her because she gets punished for it. This scene is cute, I guess, but again, it doesn't add anything. You could remove them and nothing would change. And the fact that they apparently don't age doesn't help either. I mean, it's implied that Margot is a teenager now, but how was I supposed to know that if she looks no different to how she looked in the first movie? And what's up with the Simpsons inspiration? These are nothing like the Simpsons kids. Are they just afraid to age them up because they'll lose the marketable cute factor? Why do you even want them to be like the Simpsons kids if you already have the minions? Oh yeah, the minions were in this movie. Do you remember them? I have sort of a love-hate relationship with these things. In the first movie, they were fine. They got the job done. I didn't hate them. They're mostly kinda cute and actually get shit done. I'd argue they were funnier in the second movie, but here they still have their moments. In Minions 1, I didn't give a single shit about them. This is the last time I'm bringing up this movie. Let's never talk about this movie again. In Despicable Me 3, they were just completely pointless. Nothing about them in jail was funny. Then there was Minions 2, which, you know, they were okay in that. They regained some of the charm they had in the first two. Well, I'm saying charm a lot in this video. They were sort of a step backwards in this movie, though. I mean, they weren't, like, painfully annoying, but again, they, they just exist in this movie just to exist. Nothing they do is really funny, and it's very easy to forget that they're even in this movie. There was one major exception, though, and that was the Mega Minions. You know, the characters that were plastered all over the marketing, they were a standout because their scenes were the only funny bits in the movie. The problem is that they're barely in the fucking thing. There's literally only one scene dedicated to them doing superhero stuff. And while I enjoyed it, that's like the extent of their screen time. This felt like false advertising. They don't even do shit in the climax. They just run over the villain even when he's already defeated. So what was the point of them? What was the point of any of this? I feel like I'm losing my goddamn mind! So yeah, just to recap, the movie has an almost nothing plot. There are a lot of pointless add-ons. The villain just meanders around through most of it. The most intimidating thing he does is turn Luigi into a cockroach zombie thing. At first, I thought this was gonna lead to a cool climax where he turns, like, everyone on the planet into a weird cockroach zombie hybrid, but no, just this one dude. And also the baby, which is kind Lame. I find it funny that there are two Will Ferrell franchises this year that have cockroach villains and minions. Bro gave up Megamind for this, but uh, does anyone really blame him? Still doesn't change the fact that this guy is nowhere near close to the epicness of El Macho. Which, by the way, this may contain spoilers for the ending, so if you don't want to be spoiled, then uh, I don't know, don't watch the video. Stop watching it. Okay, there's your warning, uh, three, two, one. El Macho shows up at the very end of the movie. All of the villains do, from every single Despicable Me movie, including Minions and Minions 2. Even Vector is there, even though I thought he was stuck in space, but uh, I guess he's here now. They don't explain this. Of course they don't. He also floss dances. I was ready to hate this on principle, but at this point, that's the least of the movie's problems. The movie basically pulls a Kung Fu Panda 4, but like, it doesn't feel earned at all. It's just a thing that happens. Like the Mega Minions. Like, they're great, but they feel like they only exist just because every Despicable Me sequel needs to have a gimmick with the Minions. The second movie had the Purple Minions, the third movie had them in jail, and even Minions 2 had them doing karate and shit. But of course we can't get more of these guys because the rest of the movie is just bogged down by so much pointless waste. This franchise somehow made me pray to see Ice Age again. And I know some of you were like, well, this is an Illumination movie. You shouldn't expect it to be a masterpiece like Puss in Boots 2. And I know I didn't and I shouldn't, but like, damn it, I thought Illumination was getting better. They've been on a roll in the 2020s. Mario was good. Migration is without a doubt their best. Minions 2 is a massive improvement 
over the first and even sing to i didn't think was that bad here it just looks like we're back to illumination slap we haven't had since secret life of pets 2 well at least for now anyways their next film is super mario bros movie 2 which i'm very excited for because of yoshi or at least i think it's the mario movie sequel they never really made it clear but then after that we're getting minions 3 yay I really hope they just end the mainline Despicable Me franchise here, because you can't just have every single villain show up at the very end of the movie and then go, uh yeah, let's make another one. Even Dr. Navario and Bruce's brother showed up, like, like, it truly felt like a finale to the series. If DM5 doesn't have any of the kids aging, then I guarantee you I would not give a single fuck. This franchise is running out of steam, or at least quality-wise, because it's still making money. Oh, why is this still making money? How are people not tired of these? There are other movies I say are more worth your time. Just skip this one and wait for the day the Earth blew up. That looks epic. Here's hoping Minions 3 is at least on par with the second one. You can go watch this if you want, preferably not in theaters, but I will say watching the first two might be a better use of your time. But did you already see the movie? If so, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Do you hate it? Are you mixed on it? This is just my opinion. You're allowed to like it. It's cool if you like it, but man, this was the most half-baked movie Illumination has done since Secret Life of Pets 2. Okay, I guess Mario was also kind of half-baked, but at least that was fun. Talk about it in the comments. Uh, bye bye I don't respect boomers. Ah!